Welcome to the cheapest EV on sale right now in South Africa. It has a starting price of 686,950 rands. And yeah, by EV standards, this is as cheap as they come. This makes you realize just how expensive electric cars are in South Africa. The Volvo EX30 is Mzanti's top selling EV. And to get one in your garage, you have to part away with at least 775,900. And that's very expensive. There's a reason why these EVs are this expensive and not yet popular in South Africa. The high prices for these EVs is down to the combination of taxes and high battery prices. Electric vehicles in South Africa are currently slept with a 25% import tax, which is higher than the one imposed on internal combustion engine cars. And currently, there's no plan to lower these taxes in the near future. These taxes are the reason why we don't have tax like yet in our market. Many of our overseas exports are planning to ban internal combustion engines in 2030s, and this will put our manufacturing industry at risk. It will be interesting to see how our government will react to this. The battery technology is not cheap as well. Reports suggest that the modern battery accounts for around 40% of the cost of production of an EV, and this contributes to these high prices. Another problem facing these EVs in South Africa is the issue of charging infrastructure. Theoretically, most modern EVs are capable of covering 400 kilometers or more between charges, but in longer distances, it's a problem. There are charging infrastructure in most cities, but when you get into the rural areas, that's where the problems start. In the bright side, Zero Carbon Charge is slowly rolling out a nationwide network of solar-powered rural charges that will eventually be spaced at 150 kilometers apart. So it's not doom and gloom at the end. For those who are not aware how electric cars work, they receive energy from the power source when you are charging them and they store this energy in their battery. The battery will then give power to the motor which will then move the car. This is different from a hybrid car because hybrids, as the name suggests, have both an electric motor with the battery and an internal combustion engine. Electric cars functions without the need of this internal combustion engine. Now that EV stuff is out of the way, let's get back to this other three. It comes in four different models, all of which have a front mounted electric motor that can generate 126 kilowatts and 250 Nm of torque. You can choose between two different battery options. The standard range 300 variant and the extended range 400 variant. The 300 variant uses a 48 kilowatt hour lithium ion phosphate battery that provides a driving range of 310 kilometers. The 400 variant uses a 63 kilowatt hour nickel manganese cobalt battery that offers a range up to 420 kilometers. But this GT Ultra Luxury that you are looking at can cover up to 400 kilometers but it's still the 400 variant. I really like the design of this Auto 3. It's a cute little car. It takes the shape of the VW ID3, but because it was designed by a former Porsche designer, it has some looks of a Porsche, particularly the cute front eye front end. As Chinese models have shown so far, the amount of standard features in them is always remarkable, and this aura is not different. Across the range, expect to get the following features as standard. LED lights all around the car, electric wing mirrors, 18-inch alloy wheels, careless entry on the driver's side, leatherette seat with electric adjustability for both driver and passenger. You'll get wireless charging, a 360-degree view camera, adaptive cruise control, tire pressure monitoring system, and six airbags. As standard, you also get this 10.25-inch digital driver's display and the infotainment screen of the same size comes with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay compatibility. The top range model, which is the GT Ultra Luxury, has added high-tech features like automatic parking, intelligent speed assist, and intelligent cruise control. There's so many features in this other three, it's impossible to list them one by one. The GT Ultra Luxury also gets some red trim on the outside, dashboard, steering wheel, and seat edges. I really like the design of this auto-drizzing tier. It's clean and modern, 
which is what we have come to expect from recent Chinese products. The benefit of driving an EV is that with batteries underfloor, you get plenty of room to move around. Knee room and leg room is very generous, as so too is the headroom, but it gets reduced when you move to the middle seat because of the sunroof in this GT. This rear-end design results in a disappointingly small boot, with a capacity of just 228 liters. Even the Swift doesn't have such a small boot. The car doesn't come with a spare wheel, but at least the tailgate is electric. When you purchase an order 3, you get a 7-year 200,000km car warranty, an 8-year 150,000km warranty on the high-voltage part, a 7-year 105,000km service plan, and a 7-year unlimited kilometer roadside assistance. Pricing for the Aura 3 start from 686,950 rands, and this GT Ultra Luxury start from 835,950 rands, and yet it's still the cheapest EV on the market right now. This marks the end of this review. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe to Cars24 for more cars related content. We'll meet again on our next video. Until next time. Peace.